Hallo, Didier Stevens hier, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. I wrote uh, a blog post about uh, analyzing malicious OneNote documents and uh, also a diary entry on the Internet uh, Storm Center. So here in this video, I'm going to show you a bit uh, how I proceeded. So in my blog post, I do this with uh, binary editor, 010 editor. Here in this video, I'm going to use uh, my tools to do the analysis. So I was asked to take a look at the, at the OneNote file and I was not uh, familiar with the format of uh, OneNote files. So I started to uh, investigate, take a look at the binary data. And with my tool, Cut Bytes, I can do, for example, an uh, ASCII hexadecimal dump of the start of the file. So A for uh, ASCII. And here I specify which part of the file I want. And here from the start to zero, I want a, le a length of 100 hexadecimal, so 256 bytes. And this is the sample that I was given. This is how it looks. I don't recognize anything. Here at the start, I expected to find some uh, magic sequence to identify the file, like you can have with uh, MZ files, uh, Windows executables. See, they start here with MZ. Uh, PNG files. Starts with 89 and then PNG. Uh, zip files starting with pk this here but i need to say no extraction so that my tool doesn't extract the content from the zip file but that we take a look at the zip file itself and here you can see pk so we don't have that in one node file at least not something i recognize but if you see at the start, these are binary values, by that I mean non-printable characters, most of them. And um, they look random. So this could be a GUID, globally unique identifier. Eh? Microsoft likes to use them. Now, a GUID is a, a sequence of 16 bytes. And in the representation of, of Microsoft, it's a mix on how it has to be interpreted. So the last eight bytes, they are just in big endian format. But the four first four eight bytes, they are in little endian formats. So these four bytes, then these two bytes, and then these two bytes. So you, little endian mean you have to inverse the sequence. And that is actually something you can easily do with my tool, 400 bytes. If you don't specify anything to that tool, it will just look at the first 16 bytes and give you different interpretations of those bytes. So let's do this. So first you take a look at the first byte, interprets it as an integer. And so the first byte is a minus 28 integer if it is signed, and it is 228 integer if it is unsigned and so on here with two integers and so on. And here at the end, we have 16 bytes interpreted as a GUID. Uh, fully um, big engine GUID interpretation, as you can see here, and here the representation how Microsoft likes to use it. Uh, mixed, and that's what you can see, mixed engine. So these here, little engine, this one here, big engine. Okay. So assuming this is GUID, I'm going to copy this, search for it, and I'm lucky here, I end up at a document that specifies a file format, MS of Microsoft One Store. So this is indeed a file header, a GUID, a file header for .one files. So that's the way to identify them. Next, I'm looking for something inside that uh, one note file, 
and malicious OneNote file and uh, executable for example and that's something I can look for with my tool PE check to analyze uh, PE files and I can say locate the PE header in any data that I give you so here the OneNote file and then it indeed finds a 64-bit executable at this position and this length so that file is inside a OneNote file at this position so again with cut bytes I will take a look so 0x to AA4 and indeed this is a PE file here you have the MZ here the offset to the PE header and here then the PE header Let's see what comes in front here, if we can recognize anything. Um, let's say 70 for example, go to 17. Mm, okay, I'm here, Libri, so let me do a bit more, because I expect that this is yeah, Calibri, a font. Okay, so here I have the start of my PV file MZ and let's take a look so a lot of zeros in front of it and then again here another 16 byte sequence this also could be a grid if we are lucky so that's position 20 so 60 here plus 20 makes 80 okay so let's see if this is a grid I cut this out. Now instead of an ASCII dump I do a, just a binary dump. And then I feed that into format bytes. And then here we have the grid representation. Let's search for that. And here we have an MS1 store. So when I did this search a couple of uh, weeks ago this was the first hit but now it's the sans i see diary entry and that is the the first hit so this here specifies a header for a file data store so the grid um, 16 bytes here they actually uh, represent only 12 bytes but it's actually 16 bytes long and then the length and then unused, reserved, and so on, and then the actual data. So we have the grid, 16 bytes, the length, 8 bytes, unused, 4 bytes, reserved, 8 bytes, and then we have the data. And then we also have a terminating grid. So 16, 4, that's 20, 8 and 8, that uh, is 16. So in total, these are 36 bytes. 36 bytes after the start of the grid, we have the file data. And that's how I quickly put together a simple program based on my template. It's called OneDump. It will look for that grid for the file header store in all the data, find all in the data, enumerate this, and then extract the format like the length and the file data and then dump this out or if there is a select then um, dump the data so let's see how that looks one dump on the file and like my other tools it also works on the zip file and here you can see the data so this is in my beta folder because I might still change the format here, how this output is. But so, for every here file data store object, you have an entry here, and it's indexed one, two, three. So we have three such entries here in the file. This is the position hexadecimal where the header was found. 
this is the first four bytes of the file .png mz so uh, the rpe file and then also another picture this here is the again the magic sequence but in hexadecimal this is the, the size and this is the md5 checksum of the embedded data these are all things that uh, you can change and if i compare that to my extraction with pe check yeah, indeed i have the same uh, hash so one dump gives you that data and then you can use it uh, like my other tools uh, for example say select two like this and you get an hexadecimal ascii dump you can do a binary dump and that pipe that for example in pe check to give you an overview of the sections for example to uh, the analysis so my tool here one dump is very simple it just looks for a sequence of this and this can also be yeah, tempered with them so i can for example create a, f a one node file into which i put a binary file and that binary file has also that grid somewhere inside so this can fool my my tool here um, into improperly decoded data so it's uh, quite quick and dirty here there's absolutely no full parsing of uh, the binary data just looking for that grid and assuming that that grid is a start of uh, a file data store object header there have been yara holes developed by florian hot here and what uh, florian did in his uh, uh, rules is also search for that grid and then here in this one rule th that um, detects one node uh, files with a suspicious embedded file so six strings that are looked for each time the same grid then here uh, can be these are wildcards can be any byte value but 36 bytes after the start of the grid here starts the payload and here this one here checks for a pe file so this is mz this one here these two here search for bat files but because bat files um, don't have a magic header mm, uh, florian here is looking for at echo of that's what we are seeing in uh, malicious one node files that are being distributed now here that's for vbs files on error resume at the start because also there's no magic and then lnk files lnk files have a magic header for c00000 so if one of these six strings is found and the file is less than five megabytes then the rule will trigger so let's check this um, and here you see it triggers on uh, two files and also on the Yara rule uh, itself but that's another rule the Yara file I mean and then also just uh, as an observ uh, remark and I'm going to talk about that later not in this video here if you look in my beta github and uh, here you have one dump I have also one node rules these are Sturicata rules for the detection, uh, similar to the Yara rules, something I, I'm working on.